Hello, church. I continue to hope that you're finding peace in this season uh, that seems like peace is a myth, right? We live in a world that would want you to believe it's a myth. Jesus comes so that you would know that it's real. Uh, just a quick shout out to Jason Arnold, our youth pastor who preached for us yesterday in our series on grace and what a great job he did and what a blessing he is to the young people in our church and our community uh, as he serves literally community-wide. We're so blessed to have this incredible man of God uh, leading our young people and being a stand-up guy uh, as a witness for the other men in our church. So we find ourselves at the very end of Philippians chapter 2, uh, and then we get introduced to a new character named Ephrodites. And so let me share with you from verse 25. It says, But I think it is necessary to send back to you Ephroditus, my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs, for he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him and not on him only, but also on me to spare me the sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. So then welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. All right, so there's a couple of things going on here besides the fact that Paul obviously has a great deal of affection for this man from Philippi, right? He, he is uh, overwhelmed by his generosity and his kindness, and we'll get to that in just a second. But part of what we need to understand culturally is was Paul is in prison. In that day, the state or Rome did not care for its prisoners. In other words, if you were in prison, it was the responsibility for your family to bring you food. <clears throat> it was the responsibility of your friends uh, to care for you. And so this is why Paul has so many people coming and going uh, while he is in prison, because they are coming literally to care for him. Now, what does it say about the church at Philippi? Of all the churches that Paul planted, this is the one that sends somebody a great distance in order to love on him and to care for him and to meet his needs while he is in prison. And so we find that this new character, Aphrodite, uh, gets sick. We don't know what happened. We don't know what the illness was. We don't know if it happened as he traveled. We don't know if it happened once he got to Rome, uh, but he clearly almost died. Now, can I just tell you that uh, during COVID, I spent more time praying for people that I loved who were very, very sick. And, and quite honestly, some ended tragically. I think this is what Paul is talking about, that he did not want to have sorrow visited upon his sorrow. And then we saw that some recovered and did really well. And it was really a mixed bag of emotions in that season. But I understand what it feels like as a pastor uh, and a fellow brother and a soldier in the gospel war uh, to hurt for those that are sick, right, that have come alongside us. Right? So I think what's interesting to me is uh, when I read this passage, I think of uh, Isaiah 6, when God says, who shall I send? And the prophet says, send me. Church, we need more send me people these days in our congregations. Let me tell you a story about a couple in our church. Um, you might not know them because they don't do anything to try to stand out, yet they show up all the time. They are the first people to call in a crisis. How can we help? They're the first people to offer themselves to someone else. They're the first people to sign up for any type of mission-related activity that we do. They're the first in line. They're send me kind of people. Quite honestly, I wish I had a hundred more couples like them. And we have many that are like them. But honestly, the church should be filled with send me people. In the coming weeks, we'll be sending two teams out. We'll be sending a team to the Bahamas that is three years past due after the hurricane that devastated that island. And we're sending a team to Kenya to work in the baby rescue mission there. These are send me people, people that have sacrificed their own money, their own expenses, and will travel great distances in order to do something for somebody else. This is what Paul is trying to lift up. Now, I think there's a part of it, too, that we need to understand. I think Ephrodite probably is a little bit homesick. I think, I think Paul recognizes it's time for him to go home and to be loved on by his church, and to be welcomed and celebrated. Church, a lot of Sundays, we try to celebrate anybody and everybody uh, who serves in our community. You know this. You've experienced this. 
Part of that is not so that we can boast or brag, but part of it is so that we can lift up those people who are sacrificially serving in a way that makes a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. So as we get closer to Christmas, as Advent begins to progress, I just ask you to think about whether you're a sin me kind of person in the kingdom of God or whether you think it's somebody else's responsibility. So church, we've got a lot of work to do in the coming years as the church. And I look forward to doing it with you as we do it together for the joy of our Lord. I love you and I can't wait to be with you next week. And so just a little program note, we're going to step out before we start chapter three of Philippians. We're going to step out and do a couple of uh, take fives on Christmas and a take five on the new year. So I hope that blesses you. Looking forward to it.